Welcome Kinders, it's Jessica and this video is going to be looking at the new moon in Virgo which is happening at the beginning of September 2024. I've got the chart here which is in my Honeycomb Planner. Uh, it's just a lunation chart for where I am which is in South Wales. If you want to get the chart for your area then you can but you don't need to actually know like that's, this is the whole point of these videos. You don't need to know the ins and outs of all that stuff. I'm going to speak to you about all of the energy that is going on with this new moon in Virgo and how this new moon is actually setting the tone for the whole period of time until we get to the new moon in an, in an eclipse in um, Libra and the beginning of October. So this, this new moon is actually in place, you know, this lunation is in place for the whole of September. So yeah, it's, it's really helpful to see these moon videos as like I think sometimes people see them as like something to do around the moon and and I find the full moons are a little bit more like that it's a little bit more like focus energy for like a sort of week period but with the new moons they really are like a, a rebirth point for that whole kind of season until you get to the next new moon so so we're going to be talking about that I want to mention so that I don't forget later on that I have made a guide, a free guide for you to download as well, which is about Virgo new moons in general, you know. So I will talk a little bit about what that means, but I've I've made the guide so I don't have to go too much into that. But if you want to get that, you can download it. I'll leave the link to download that below. You can, um, it'll explain like what the new moon in Virgo generally means. And also it's got a little breakdown so that if you know your rising sign, you can look at like the kind of more specifics house space stuff for your rising sign as well which will give you more of a, an input like if you wanted to be setting intentions around this new moon it'll give you more of a specific input but we also have like a kind of general input you know around this Virgo new moon as well which is what I want to talk about in this video really interesting new moon we've been having lots of uh like I don't know how you've been feeling it, but I find that shift into Virgo season, which starts when the sun moves into Virgo, which happens at the end of August every year. And everyone just like you can see it around, you, you know, like the people are starting to stock up on their like back to school supplies and everyone's getting in that kind of like organization energy for the final part of, of this year, you know. So that energy is very Virgo. Virgo likes um, organization and details and um, having a plan for things you know making sure you've got enough resources like Virgo is tied in with that idea of harvest as well you know so when we harvest we are gathering our resources together and putting them in safe spaces so that we have enough to see us through the winter you know it's not just being like sometimes Virgo gets a bad rap for being like overly uh, like anal about things you know like kind of pernickety for no reason but it's not for no reason you know we need resources Virgo is mutable earth so it's about those earth things you know like our health our finances our physical environments and so Virgo is very uh sometimes cautious but very practical you know it's like we need to gather this energy whatever it is that I'm, I need to harvest at this time now and it needs to see us through the winter and yes, you know, in the modern world, we don't live like that anymore, you know, in lots of, in most places in the modern world, we're not living from like harvest to harvest and having to see our kind of like food harvest see us through. But on a metaphorical level, we are still cyclical beings, you know, and one of the ways that we can implant ourselves back into living in this world in a more connected and more real, more human way, you know, humans are not living as humans are supposed to be at the moment, is to embed ourselves back in these cycles. So perhaps, you know, you're not literally harvesting your garden, you might be, you know, but most of us are not, you know, most of us are not. So what are we harvesting? When we get to this Virgo new moon, it is time for us to think about what it is that we, what were the seeds we planted last year? And how have they come to fruition or not? So that is why Virgo likes to look at like the, the plans, you know, I want to look back at like I'm at the beginning of the year, I made these um, vision your year workbooks. And I worked through all this and like set out my plans and intentions for this year. And now it's into Virgo season, I want to really like revisit that again now and get stuck into all the details of like the things that I planned and what like what has come what is well what am I harvesting and which of my harvests have failed you know and there's I've used the word failed there but it's not like 
when we think of harvest failing in in the natural world you know there's always a reason for that like oh the weather was too cold or perhaps it rained too much or we didn't have enough sun you know there are reasons for that and that is how I like to look at my own harvest too I'm like okay so this is this has flourished and I can harvest that and that is wonderful but then the things that haven't flourished is like why is that and the the reason is not because I'm a crap human you know I'm I'm not a good person I didn't deserve it those are not the reasons and it's the same for you it's not you haven't not achieved your goals because you there's something wrong with you you didn't achieve your goals because the environment that you're in you know like yes okay we're not talking necessarily about the weather and things like that here but your environment like the people around you the connections that you have in your life the support structures that you have in your life have not been the right conditions for you to be able to reap the harvest that you wanted to reap. So there's no judgment there, you know, there's no judgment there. So when we are coming to this Virgo season now, it gives us this opportunity, this new moon to examine that and see if we can create better conditions. You know, Virgo also um, is kind of like, it's linked to like the virgin goddesses, the maiden goddesses. It's got that uh, hearth keeper, hearth tender uh, energy about it as well you know so like very linked in with Bridget as well even though like we normally associate Bridget more with the other side of the year you know with the the end of winter beginning of spring but I find that that kind of virgin goddess energy also comes forward at this Virgo new moon time as well so how can we like kind of harness that energy harvest that energy to bring our goals forward so when we're looking at this Virgo new moon generally you know as well when we, and, and use the guide to get it to look at that and also to look at the more specifics for you for your rising sign but when we look at this specific new moon in Virgo which for me is on the 3rd of September at 2.55 we can sort of glean some details about what the energy is going to be like what the environment is going to be like so that we can like at this time of the year I'm looking to like I said looking at my goals again and seeing how those things have have either flourished or and are ready to harvest or haven't and also you know like when when we do harvest there's also that element of of gathering the seeds as well for next year's harvest you know because we're always looking ahead and Virgo loves to look ahead you know it's that practical planning mercury ruled sign you know we're looking ahead we're being um strategic we're being uh, clever in our choices and things that we're doing here now so this new moon I love it this new moon as we come around to uh, you know, this time of year, it is just, uh, it's like just one of the ones that really, um, it's so helpful. <laughs> it's so practical. I think that's probably why I love it. It's just such a practical new moon. It's such a great time for setting practical intentions, you know, that Virgo. And like Virgo is usually associated with things like our work routines, our kind of life routines, the things we do every day. So like our health, our habits, our food, you know, those kind of like practical routines. And so if you don't know like your rising sign or you don't want to go into it in that kind of granular detail, setting intentions for around this new moon for those kind of things, you know, setting up healthy habits, healthy routines, health in general is very like Virgo coded. Uh, so it's just, it's just such a great opportunity to put that kind of practicality in place, you know. So let's have a look at the details of what this, this moon has got. We have got uh, yeah, so let's talk about the actual, the sun and the moon are together in Virgo. So uh, when we get a new moon, that is what it means. It's when the sun and the moon are together. And that's why it's a new moon. It's the rebirth point of the moon as it comes, it meets the sun and then the moon carries on because the moon is traveling quicker. The moon comes to the sun. They have a rebirth moment and the sun, the moon is like reborn out of the sun. So the moon seems to appear, disappear from the sky for us. And that's why we have this dark moon period leading up to the new moon. And then, you know, a few, a, a couple of days after the new moon, we will start to see that crescent moon appearing again, because as the, as the moon moves away from the sun, we can see it again. When it's with the sun, we don't see it because it's rising and setting with the sun and the brightness of the sun obscures the moon from our view. So we can't see it, but it is still there and it will be reborn, you know, um, renewed, revitalized by that golden sun energy, you know. So we've got that sun and moon together. And if we look... We can follow this red line, which is an opposition, over to Saturn here in uh, in Pisces. So it's not because this line is quite thin. The way that they do it in Honeycomb, which I really like, is like the the more exact. 
the aspect, the like the thicker the line, so it makes it more kind of clear. Like if we look back at oh, I haven't I've got that's in my old one now. I'm between honeycombs because my new one starts in in the Virgo season. <laughs> so you can see like on our last full moon. These really thick T-square lines, you know, because it was all very, uh, very tight aspects that were happening. But this is not a super tight, which is why it's kind of like a, a thinner. The Sun and Moon are at 11 degrees and Saturn is at 16 degrees. So it's still within orb, which is why it's it's uh, highlighted here. But it's not like a super tight, but it is an opposition. So Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is that planet that wants to kind of put boundaries in place to kind of... Uh, I actually find Saturn's energy is quite, um, it's, it's not too counter against Virgo, apart from sometimes it wants to be even more cautious and also kind of slow. Virgo is not slow. Virgo wants to put things in place quickly, you know, like um, react to the details and, and kind of um, can change its game plan according to like how, when the information is coming out, where Saturn... <laughs> Saturn does not like to kind of quickly change game plans you know Saturn's like I'm digging my heels in for the long haul so there is that little bit of antagonism there but generally like that opposition I'm not seeing as being like if anything I feel like Saturn is lending a little bit of because it's in Pisces and it's retrograde it's kind of like lending like a little bit of a <sighs> sort of like a maybe like a bit of a downer on the situation you know like like it's, it's wanting us to dream smaller it's wanting us to like kind of uh just dial it it wants us to dial it back you know and so just be aware of that as you're setting intentions for this Virgo new moon and it doesn't mean that it's like not um Saturn's going to be like kind of being like hmm that's your it's like this is your big dream and Saturn's like yes but that's not realistic you know not always just like in this particular configuration that we've got here now so just be aware of that and if you feel like you're kind of like going too much towards that and and you do have to watch that in, with Virgo in general it's like what is practically achievable for me, you know, rather than like, what magic can I weave, you know, it, dream the possibilities first, and then we can, you know, you can kind of work on the details later, like Virgo wants the details, so it's like, yes, but how, but how, you know, how are we going to do that, and um, how can we make that work kind of thing, but you can bring that Virgo energy to your big dream, you know, so you get your big dream in place first, and then you use that Virgo energy to, to break it down into manageable, achievable steps, yeah, it's not about making the dream small in the first place so that it's kind of easy to do and not exciting and doesn't make you feel a little bit scared and also thrilled at the same time, you know? So just be aware that that is um, happening. And then we've, like, you can see that there's no other direct connections to the actual sun and moon itself. But it's always useful when you're looking at the new moon to look at what the ruler of the moon is doing. So the sun and the moon uh, are both in Virgo and Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So we need to look at where Mercury is in the chart. And Mercury is just here, um, back in Leo, and is just coming out of a retrograde period. So it, it it's, turns direct at the end of August. It turned direct at the end of August and is now forward, but is still kind of like in its shadow. So as it's heading back towards this point of the new moon is still in his shadow. And it's kind of like, this might be, don't worry if you, if you don't understand this bit, but if we think of the lunation as being like in the first house, Mercury is kind of like in the 12th house from the lunation. So it's kind of like in a little bit of a hidden spot. So you might be finding, and because it's in, in Leo, you might find that you're feeling like a little bit lower energy around this moon. And also that like the, the kind of um, your thinking and your kind of, quickness that kind of mercury quickness is like a little bit uh esoteric in a way a little bit hidden in a way from you so if you're not certain or sure about the goals and things you want to put in place then just don't worry I would say about like like dream the bigger dream that kind of harvest like what what would you like to be harvesting a year from now you know, when we get round to this Virgo new moon again next year in 2025, what would you like to be harvesting then? And think about that bigger dream and wait until Mercury comes to the point of the new moon, you know, comes out of its shadow period and comes here um, th during the month, during September, for you to then start figuring out the details, okay? Don't worry about the details just yet. You can, you can bring that in later, you know? But just just think about that 
think about that dream and 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 you can think about like the environment like what environment would i need around me what people what support what um resources am i going to need in order for my dream to become a reality you can start thinking about that but yeah i wouldn't go too granular on the details just yet even though virgo is going to want you to you know you like that virgo especially if you've got a lot of virgo in your own chart it's going to be like saying but you need the details but how but how you know <laughs> so just be aware of that We've also got, so we can look at like the aspects to Mercury here as well. So Mercury is making um, a sextile here to Jupiter. Jupiter and Mars have uh, like recently come together. We've had that Jupiter-Mars conjunction in Gemini, which kind of like did make things kind of spicy for some people. You know, it, it is, well, I say make things, the way that I understand astrology, the way that I work with astrology is that it is, is a mirror to us here on Earth. It's not like it's not fatalistic in that the astrology is causing what is happening here. No, the astrology is reflecting what is happening. And by looking at that, look at, looking at that and looking at it ahead of time, as we are now when we're looking at this, it it allows us to kind of see the potentials for things that are gonna that could pan out, and then we can like course correct accordingly to that, you know. So so yeah, that did kick up a little bit of um kind of aggression in a lot like in unexpected places and it is that is in mercury's other sign of gemini as well so like while mercury was retrograding we had this mars jupiter in gemini you know so it's like uh, mercury is a little bit kind of uh compromised at the moment but also uh like boosted by jupiter and also kind of like uh Whoa, like it's got that friction from Mars like Mercury and Mars are not happy together you know so our communication perhaps our self-communication how we talk to ourselves how other people talk to us how we talk to other people all of those things have kind of been we've probably been doing a lot more communicating um, and perhaps a lot more communicating from our hearts as well while while Mercury has been in Leo but perhaps that hasn't been received as we intended it you know because of all this other stuff that is going on um, and like I say, that's just a reflection of like what is going on for us down here. So if you're, you know, like if things are a little bit raw for you at the moment, like if you've, if you've had arguments, if you've had um, like just situations which you felt like they didn't understand me, I, they, I couldn't explain what was in my heart to them. If they'd been able to understand what I was actually saying, they wouldn't have reacted the way that they did. You know, if you've got things like that going on at the moment, then just be um just kind of accept i suppose that these things do happen and that even with our best intentions when we are trying to you know be honest with people and, and let them know and set healthy boundaries and things like that the sometimes things do blow up in our faces and we've just got to kind of like like i say accept like learn from that and um, perhaps there are things that we could have done differently but sometimes it is just like a like the people we're in those positions and that is kind of like how it panned out, you know. And so as Mercury moves into its own sign of Virgo now in September, there'll be a chance to kind of like um, smooth out those to get the actual like the actual details in place. And probably things will, be, will feel a lot smoother when Mars moves into Cancer as well. Like I talked about this in the month ahead forecast as well in the September uh, astrology forecast. I'll link that at the end of this video. You... <sighs> I talked quite a bit about Mars and Cancer and how that is kind of like not a great position for Mars, but is also uh, there's also some interesting things, ways we can work with that. So I'm not going to go into that all again here, but I think that when Mars does move into Cancer and like the sign is not in the same sign as Jupiter anymore as well, that will also ease that kind of communication, anything that's kind of like blown up around that we've got Uranus, which is like stationing is stationed retrograde, uh, I think the day before or two days before this new moon is very, uh, very linked into this new moon. We've got Mercury, the ruler of the moon, squaring that Uranus. So that is suggesting like uh, disruption. Again, I talked about this in the September forecast as well for, for quite a while. <laughs> so if you want more details about that, then definitely watch that. But the kind of like the um, short version is that Uranus is like, it's doing this last like this last little retrograde in Taurus and it's it's slowing things down in terms of like our resources in terms of our environment you know so um Taurus is a fixed earth sign it's like all the earth signs are connected to each other obviously by by the same elements so they're all in earth Virgo is a mutable earth sign so it's looking to kind of like change the way that we 
uh, kind of like gather our resources and like it, it understands about the seasons especially you know things like that whereas Taurus is much more like no I like spring this is how I want it the abundance needs to last all the time <laughs> so it's like a little bit like it's, it's, it's an earth sign of the same but it's also got its own different kind of fixed energy it's a very stable solid beautiful energy uh, Taurus but Uranus in Taurus is disrupting that so we may be finding that we have got disruptions in our um, in our finances, in our um, in our relationships, in our like physical environment as well, um, and and like on a more global scale, we sometimes see things like um, like landslips or earthquakes or um, disruptions in the food supply, things like that with Uranus and Taurus in generally. And when Uranus is stationing, so is very strong, uh, we may see more of that kind of stuff as well. But like I said, I talked about that a lot in the. Uh, in the forecast video for September. So yeah, it might be worth watching that if you want more details about that. But so, so this moon has got this kind of like disruptive quality to it as well, which is another reason why I think it's sensible to just kind of focus on the, the broad strokes rather than going into the fine brush details, you know, um, around this new moon time and wait until, wait until we've got Mercury moving into Virgo, wait until like we've got Libra, uh, well Libra's already in um, in its own sign, Libra, Venus, sorry, is already in its own sign of Libra, but it, yeah, I think when, when Mercury moves into Virgo, things will start to become a lot clearer and our planning, um, when Mars moves out of Gemini as well, it's like this, this new moon has kind of like got a lot of signatures, like kind of a lot of uh, hold over from things that have come before so it's like we're, we're having this new start of the new moon and we want to be like putting those new plans into place but there's still like a little bit of unfinished business let's say that we need to take care of before we can start to move forward um, more clearly and more practically which Virgo wants us to do yeah so what else have we got going on here? We have got this sextile between um, Neptune and Uranus, which I think is quite nice, actually, but might make us like a little bit more um, susceptible to kind of like. Have... <coughs> oh, gosh, sorry. Frodo's trying to get out of the room. I let him out because he clearly wanted to go out. <laughs> I, I feel like it's going to add like a little bit of a potentially like a fantasy element to it in that we might not be seeing the, the full picture clearly and Virgo definitely wants to be able to see the details to understand the details um so yeah just just kind of be aware of that it's not like a major thing that is influencing um what is going on here but just something to be aware of we've also got uh, Pluto, which is just like you can see, is 29.59. It's like at the very last second of Capricorn retrograded back in there, which is um, making a trine to the North Node as well. And I feel like that's really good. It's, it's like showing us that, um, again, in an Earth sign, so with, like our Earth signs are all quite activated with, with things happening, you know, like interesting things. We've got Uranus stationing, we've got um, Pluto just re-entering, and we've obviously got our new moon. In, in Virgo. So those earth signs are like our resources, our health, our um, ambitions, our careers. Um, they're all kind of picked up by this new moon. And we're having the opportunity, like I said, to kind of put a vision in place for what we want over the next year. And there's, but there's no rush to get to the details. I feel like I've said that quite a few times now. So I think that is, hopefully that's getting that point, <laughs> getting that point across. I think that was like all of the major details about this specific moon that I wanted to, to let you know. There are some other things happening as well. We have got this Mars Saturn square. Um, well, Mars is squaring um, Neptune and Jupiter is squaring Saturn. <sighs> I'm still seeing it as like, because we've just had this Mars-Jupiter conjunction, it is kind of still also, the, the malefics are kind of being square in each other, which is not ideal. And once once uh, Mars moves out into Cancer, then that will kind of go away as well. Anyway, it, there's still like an air of tension, let's say, um, a, a, a tension and also like a, a confusion. So it's like a confused tension. It's like, I'm I'm not being able to connect with people the way that I want to. And they're not understanding me. They're not getting where I'm coming from around things. And they they feel the same about you. <laughs> they're like, why don't they just get me, you know? 
but that is just that will ease like sometimes they just are like blocks to us being able to to reach out and communicate with each other and i think like with venus in libra as well like venus is very close to the south node so that doesn't like it it's not a strong position for venus to be in but she is strong in libra so once venus comes past that south node she'll be able to bring a lot more sort of soothing and smoothing into the into the situation arbitrary arbitrating arbitrating is that the word it, into it as well so like i say it's like this new moon is like it's almost like a kind of like a coiled spring we and we want to like release that energy but it, it's like that energy needs to stay contained for the moment because like we can't just like force our way through it we need to just like be with that like irritation that kind of confusion um and just look forward to the future look towards that bigger picture type stuff and then you know like in a couple of weeks time it'll start to unwind naturally so rather than kind of like letting it spring out and it bounces off and we don't know where you know like anything could happen we're just going to gradually release it and you know be able to harness like uh, harvest that energy from that instead yeah so that. That is kind of like what it is. It's, it normally like with new moons, we want to be like setting our intentions and we're getting everything in place. But I feel like with this one, there's there's more of an element of mm, let's just let's let's just hang fire for a moment, you know. And what was interesting is this card came out for us on our last new moon, and um, the lovers card when we had our new moon in Leo. And I, it's interesting because it was the new moon in Leo, and the lovers is is. Uh, associated with mercury because it is associated with the sign of gemini and the lovers is a lot about about choice it's about connection with people definitely you know and sometimes literally about lovers i talked about this in the last new moon video but it's also about choice and we are being asked to make some choices now and we can see that mercury mercury retrograded back into leo um which is to do with like that heart um connection with that last moon and now um, we're in a Virgo moon and so we've still got that Mercury influence but we're still kind of bringing that love that heart centered stuff into it and I feel like there's there's still that like sort of schism like the the that we're that we've been working on this is still kind of like hanging over like I said from last time we still haven't quite chosen yet and like these we can see these mushrooms on this card they're not ripe yet and it was making me think even more as well of that uranus stationing in taurus because i like i find taurus so like oak tree coded that there's like a disruption in in that kind of uh solidity but mushrooms do disrupt but they are actually like recycling. They're bringing new new life. Um, and you can see like there's worms here as well. So they, they, they're part of that regenerative process. And we are still like, that's kind of, kind of what I wanted to get across is that we're still in this regenerative process at the moment. It hasn't finished yet. And that's why this new moon might feel like a little bit like, not like a new moon in some ways, you know? We want to be still be finishing off, tying up those loose ends, um, of the stuff that we've already been working on. So if you feel like, oh, I hadn't even really um, got to grips with with that Leo uh, new moon and I'm still kind of working on that stuff, we are still working on that stuff. Um, th there is that period of time, like I say, where we're still figuring this this stuff out. And like it was, a, it is a major that came out. Let's see what's going to come out for the next um, season. I pulled out my Paulina Tarot. I find this a very like mercurial deck in general, but a kind of like a bit more earthy mercurial than the Joie de Vivre. So uh, very Virgo. So let's take those out and give it a quick shuffle. I'll uh, cut some of my shuffling because you don't want to be watching me shuffling.
So while I was shuffling, the Hermit card actually flew out of the deck. I didn't keep it out because it didn't fall on my desk. It actually fell like on the floor by the side of me. So that's kind of like my rule. <laughs> if it falls out like face up on my desk, then I take it as that that's the card. But that isn't what happened. But I thought that was interesting because it is the it is a card that is associated with Virgo. But let's see, it'll be interesting if it comes out again now, which sometimes it does when you're supposed to pay attention. Oh, okay. So no, we've got the King of Wands. Interesting. The King of Wands. So that kind of like very uh, bright, powerful, creative energy. Very interesting connection with our goddess that we're working with. If you're in the membership, we're working with Spider Woman. Um, we've also got this uh, like lion face embedded in here as well, which is connecting into that Leo. So we're still like, again, there's still like Leo fire energy that is here. And like, you know, we talked about the fact that we had Mars, which is also a fire energy. Um, it's kind of like uh, with Jupiter getting very kind of like expanded. In fact, Mars, Jupiter together is kind of kings of wand, king of wands -y, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, and you'll see like the king is kind of like just sort of sat there. He's taking his time, but he has already um like he's like reached the pinnacle isn't he like when we get to any of the kings when we get to the, when we're in tarot they they're kind of like the most expressed of the suit you know so he has got that kind of um mature creative power but he's not like actually uh, like demonstrating it in this specific moment. I mean, there's loads of details in this card as well that we could talk about. You know, there's <laughs> there's trees here, there's candles here, there's there is a lot of stuff. We have got this like kind of earthy um, carving. You know, that is like blending into the ground as well. He's a very like earthed. He's got like the the other elements at his disposal as well to be able to create with. But he's not, he's taking, he's biding his time. That's how I'm reading this card. You know, like we've got this huge creative power at our disposal, but we need to just bide our time. The king doesn't rush in. It's not the knight of wands, you know, if he'd had the knight of wands, it's like, boom, let's rush in now. But no, he's had the experience to know that sometimes you, you will be better served. You will get better outcomes if you just keep your creativity kind of contained, you know, keep that spring contained until the moment is is right, you know, and then you will see much more fruitful results, much more helpful results coming from that. Because sometimes like with the night rushing in, the results that, that he gets are not what he wanted, not what he intended, you know. The King of Wands, he uses his magical potential, that's creative um, powerful fire spiritual potential to manifest the things that he wants in a very kind of strategic and successful way you know so if we want those outcomes if we want to ensure that we have a good harvest next year uh, then we can bring that king of wands creativity uh, into that and really yeah take heed of that waiting just for a little while wait until things unfold yeah so that is the new moon guidance video. Let me know what you think, if you have any feels about this new moon, any plans, ideas of what you're going to do, any thoughts on the card. Thank you so much for watching. Warmest, warmest blessings and I'll see you very soon.